All right. Welcome, everyone. We're super excited to be here for our first keynote of the day. Today, we have Tanya Wright with, our, with us. She is the founder of Big Hair Harriet, a literacy-based educational system for children five through eight, based on the Big Hair Harriet book series, which is going to debut May 2024. And we have discussed this um, online, just her and I, and I cannot wait for it to come out. She is a graduate of Vassar College and Harvard Graduate School of Education, where she received her master's in learning design, innovation, and technology. Ms. Wright is the winner of the Hive Award, the Harvard Innovative Venture in Education, and the Education Entrepreneurship Fellowship at Harvard University. That is amazing. Tanya was a highly creative, distracted early learner. In many ways, Big Hair Harriet was the system that she wished she had as a child. As an actor, she has realized that she's a unique position and person, and she can educate children and people. The acting profession is very childlike. In literacy, it, when she was younger, she used to play dress up for a living, and now she does it too. Um, she certainly gets to use social emotional co coping skills when dealing in Hollywood. Ha ha ha. <laughs> so Tanya Wright is a two-time Screen Actors Guild Award winner, Best Ensemble, for her portrayal of Crystal Bursette in Orange is the New Black. If you haven't seen Orange is the New Black, you need to see it. Tanya, we are super excited for you to be here. Next slide, please. So before we get this party started, we just want to kindly request your attention for a brief moment. In the spirit of transparency and respect for our community, we have some information that we'd like you to read in the on-screen disclaimer. By taking a few moments to read through the disclaimer, you empower yourself with pertinent information regarding the boundaries of our knowledge sharing environment. I'm going to pause for just a minute. Next slide, please, Tanya. Take a moment to read through this slide also. Then together, we'll embark on these exciting sessions today, while we push boundaries and leave an indelible mark on the ever-evolving landscape of early childhood education knowledge. Tanya, without further ado, the floor is yours. Hey, everybody. It's great to see you all. Um, see you, metaphorical see you, because I can't actually see you. Um, and this session is highly interactive. So I am gonna be deeply reliant um, on Tisha and Stephanie to tell me what's going on in the chat because I can't see that either. <laughs> um, so it is a real pleasure to be here today. I have been very much looking forward to this session. And I want to say um, thanks to Tisha for reaching out to me um, on LinkedIn, she did. Um, with you know, I I I I get lots of LinkedIn um, um, messages, and and Tisha's came with all of these exclamation points, and um, exclamation points are are are, are really um, uh, things that most people don't use, and I love it when people do use them, and so I'm you know, it was just I was very responsive to it. So um, and obviously, um, early education is something that I am. I'm deeply passionate about and 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 will really be spending, you know, which what I think is is my life's work uh, in in this field. So I'm delighted to be here today. My name is Tanya Wright. Um, I will have on the screen um, a couple of the things that Tisha mentioned, but I I I will mention them again, um, uh, not for hoo hoo ha ha, but because um, it will become a pivotal um, component in the interactive session and the exercises that, I, that I'd like you to do. Um, and, and that is um, your life story. Um, Tisha mentioned a couple things um, that I sort of wanna double down on. And the reason why I wanna double down on them is because I want you to be able to, um, we, we can all see our own selves in our story, right? So there's some parts of my story um, that when you connect the dots, and we all have dots, and, and when I mean dots, I mean by things that we are compelled to do. And maybe we don't really understand why we're compelled to do them, that what, what we're compelled to do them. Maybe it's it's going into the field of teaching. Maybe it's um, turning a corner one day or, or not turning that corner on, on a specific day. Whatever it is that we are compelled to do, 
and that we do, and we don't know exactly why we're doing it, right? Other than we just feel compelled to do them. Those are dots on the page. So I'm gonna double down on some of the dots that Tisha uh, mentioned uh, in my bio. And, and as we go, I, you know, I'd like to keep the last 15 minutes of this session for Q&A um, because I want you to ask me anything. <laughs> um, and so, so please, please jot down questions for the, for the end of the session. I was born actually um, to a 15 year old mother in the South Bronx, long, long time ago. <laughs> um, Tisha mentioned that I was a highly creative child, a very disinterested, distracted early learner. And what does that mean in just layman terms? It means bored, okay, I was bored. I was bored out of my mind with school. Um, I wanted to make things. I was always thinking about stories. I was actually also a very quiet child. Um, now, yes, I've, I've been an actor and, and, and I've been on um, um, screens big and small uh, all over the world. Um, and interestingly enough, I bet if you ask many actors um, if they were an introvert or an extrovert, they would probably say an introvert. I know that doesn't make much sense, but you have to be somewhat in touch with yourself in order to portray characters and, and, and people um, in, in the world. Um, so I was a very disinterested, distracted early learner. That's a dot, that's a dot. Um, I uh, like to write a lot. I like words as a child. I never thought I was gonna be an actor. I was very shy. Um, writing was something that, that definitely appealed to, to, a, to a, a shy child, right? Because it's a very introverted uh, thing and, and you don't need anybody or anything um, to be a writer. You, you have your pen and you have your paper and that's it. You can create worlds. Um, acting is very different. It's very collaborative. You're using your body, your voice, um, and you're, you have to interface and interact with, with, with people. Um, that's another dot, words, writing. Um, also a recurring theme in my life, in my early childhood was uh, my hair. Now you can see that I've got some interesting, you know, twists going on there. Um, and I think, no, my mother had to have done that hairstyle because it's, it's pretty neat there. Um, but, but, uh, for most of my life, you could see my hair is very curly, right? And, and as a young child, um, I was on, the only one in my family with curly hair. So no one really knew what to do with this curly hair. And uh, while, it, while it looks really great uh, there on the screen, um, it did not look so great most of the days. <laughs> um, and I was sort of tasked with doing my own hair um, early. And I just really was just confounded by it. That's another that. Something that you are confounded by, that you are perplexed by, that you are um, 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 maybe have a, a, a little bit of a tough relationship with, right? And we're gonna talk about a little bit later about the curiosity that's needed in innovation, about scratching um, uh, uh, um, the, the itch or, or investigating or even pulling the thread. Um, so recurring theme in my life was hair. I was, I was not, uh, didn't really love my hair. Not that I didn't really love my hair. I just didn't know what the heck to do with it. Um, it was wild, it was curly. Um, and I, you know, it was, it was something that I just, you know, sort of threw my hands up, you know, at, at some point in my life. And then I came a full circle. Um, so the circumstances of my childhood have a lot to do with why I am here with you today. Um, and, and I would suggest uh, that, you know, all of you, the 38 uh, folks who are here on this call are here today because there's something about innovation that's interesting. There's, and, 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 and what I'm going to hopefully um, compel you to understand by the end of this, um, uh, end of our time together is that, that that has really a lot to do with you and your personal story and your personal journey. 
Um, so yes, those those things on the screen are true. Um, I, I, I would like to say I have spent most of my life as a storyteller. And, and some question, um, how is it that you have, Tanya, um, gone to um, education school? You know, I just graduated um, from Harvard uh, a year, or, uh, I guess, yeah, a year and a half ago. Um, the Harvard uh, Graduate School of Education, uh, where I got my master's in learning design innovation technology. Like, how did you bridge those two things? And I would like to tell them, there is a lesson you see on the end, uh, at the bottom of the power, PowerPoint there, there's a lesson at the heart of every story. So while, while um, you know, people in the entertainment um, industry, uh, you know, you see them out in the world and, and, and sometimes it's, it's fancy. Right now we're on strike, so not so fancy, right? Um, at the end of the day, they're storytellers. And every story, there is one aim for every story, and that is to teach. That is to teach you something about yourself, that is to teach you something about the world and um, to create a, a world where um, we can, that we, but that we know we're, that we're all connected. So um, teaching is a part of acting and entertainment and storytelling and teaching is obviously a part of teaching. <laughs> Go to the next slide. So, um, while at Harvard, uh, you know, I'll talk to you a little bit about my innovation and, and work backwards a little bit. Um, I uh, received um, the Harvard Innovative Venture Award uh, in education uh, at, at Harvard, uh, most promising early stage venture for a literacy intervention. Again, go back to the childhood, right? Writing, words, stories, all the dots have connected. Um, a literacy intervention called Harriet's House. And it's a platform designed to increase literacy proficiency in children under the age of eight. And it was inspired by this little girl. Her name is Harriet. She lives in Harlem. Um, so the book series Harriet of Harlem will be out uh, next year, as Tisha mentioned. And um, she is an amalgamation of all the things that I have done in my life. And again, I hope you're you're, you're just taking uh, notes uh, about the things about your your childhood, and even about the things that are currently going on in your life, the things that you're interested in, the things that you're curious about. Um, these things, um, creative creativity, curiosity, um, consistency. Um, what 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 sort of ideas are things that are, are things that are consistently coming up in your mind, consistently coming up in your world or you, you, that you have some, some um, curiosity about. Um, so this innovation is designed to increase literacy proficiency in children under eight. Um, in the next slide, I'll tell you exactly how I got there and we'll do an exercise uh, about, about how you might be able to get there for yourself too. But so much of the road to any innovation, and I think that this is a very little known secret, so much of the road to any innovation has to do with, with what's going on up here, right? I believe and have always believed that teachers, teachers were natural innovators. These are people who are innovating all day, every day. <laughs> you, you, you likely have dis distracted, disinterested early learners like me in your, um, in your classroom, which is your domain. Right, which is your home, which is your 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 world. You you know you are responsible for creating your culture there, um, and 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 the question is, how do you engage those students? How do you engage them? How do you you know? Ultimately, we all want to create lifelong learners, right? Um, and 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 certainly, um, um, and children who love to read, because we know that children are not reading by the third grade. Um, by the third grade level, they are four times more likely um, not to graduate from high school. And those statistics are devastating. Um, and so we all want the same things, but sometimes we have to employ different, interesting, um, unusual and orthodox methods in order to get the results that we like. <laughs> so, um, so 
so back to, to, to mindset. Um, I think that it is something that is not often talked about um, in terms of, of innovation. Um, it just, just, just being in the mind that you are an innovator. You are an innovator by virtue of being a teacher um, who, who is interfacing and, and, and um, teaching different sorts of children every single day. You know, uh, classrooms, you know, you, you have all kinds of different students uh, in your class. Um, and, 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 and there are stories for each and every one. And sometimes you have to use unusual and creative north unorthodox methods in order to engage um, those those learners so um just the idea of of innovation and your the, the mindset of innovation teacher as as natural innovator just you know just cultivating that mindset is going to help you continue to innovate um some of the things that i do and, and 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 please, if there's anything in the chat, um, Tisha, um, you know, because just we're good. Nothing in there. You're nothing in the chat. You guys use the chat feature because I want to be I want to be in dialogue with you. <laughs> um, the question answer box is up, so we are monitoring that, and we'll let you know. Great, great. Um, so um, a lot of the, the the way that I that I came to to this innovation Harriet's house was spending a lot of time with myself. <laughs> um, I like spending time alone, um, and there are certain uh, practices that I have that are um, helpful for lots of facets in my life. It is certainly helpful for innovation. Um, while 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 I have journaling as the first one, I'm actually going to reverse the first first one and two, and I'm going to say walking is 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 probably the number one way. It's the way this little girl came to mind. <laughs> it's the way um, I understood in my mind. I'm an artist, but I I feel like I think a little bit like an engineer how to construct Harriet's house uh, because. Uh, you know, I, I happen to be in a profession where I am often uh, introduced having to learn new words every day in the same way that I was uh, in, in, uh, having to learn new words as, as a child in kindergarten, first and second grade. And I did that then, and I still do it the same way I, I do it today, which is phonics. <laughs> so I, I, you know, so for example, if I am asked to play uh, a role as um, astrophysicist. It's not a world I'm in every day, uh, but but to play a role, um, there there are lots of words and vocabularies uh, vocabulary words in that domain that I'm not familiar with, and I've got to teach myself how to read those words, and I use it, plain old phonics, you know, um, uh, um, um, uh, it's 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 sounds and and words. And um, and so that's that's the crux of of the Harriet House uh, literacy intervention, but but in order to do that, I had again spend a lot of time with myself, and it came from walking. Things come from journaling. Um, I have a consistent practice of self care. That again, a lot of these things on the screen are going to be really helpful for you um, in other in every facet of your life, but it's particularly helpful for you in terms of uh, innovation. Um, collaboration is something uh, that's huge. Uh, I, I will certainly admit that I have been uh, one in my life to um, spend a lot of time doing things by myself. And um, I think that Harvard University has been really great in, in, in fostering this spirit of collaboration, cl collaboration and diversity. So you all may have an idea about how to do something because it's worked in your classroom. Um, and um, the idea that 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 you that that idea might be supercharged or even made better by collaborating with others, others who are diverse minds um, and, and diverse other skill sets, other diverse interests, are going to help in, in whatever your innovation is. And and we'll talk a little bit about innovation on on, on the next screen. Um, 
having support, having support from family, having support from administrator, whether it's your principal, your superintendent, um, and, 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 um, and asking for support when you need it is also going to be helpful in bringing any innovation um, to bear. And resiliency, you know, there are, um, whether, whether it's a business or a company or just something that you've discovered in the classroom that, that you wanna share with other teachers. Um, resiliency is, is, is also something that is a, a sort of a little known fact in, in, in creating anything. And what I mean by resiliency is that at, 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 per, per, just that what's that adage? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And that's where a lot of people sort of fall off uh, because trying and trying and trying again is not, it's really hot here, folks. I don't know if you could see me sweating like a dog, but we're in the heat wave in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, so, 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 so that's where a, a lot of people fall off and trying and trying and trying again. But th there's something, there, there is a lesson also in, in quote unquote failure. Failure is really just an opportunity to think about it differently, to pivot or to, to change maybe a little thing or maybe change a big thing, right? So failure is an opportunity. Um, and, and, and continuing the, the, the idea of, of, of pivoting, um, micro pivots or, or, um, or big pivots, um, is going to put you instead and 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 put you in good stead and you'll need to be resilient in order to to continue to do that um and obviously commitment and consistency you know there's so much uh, i think it's a part of of success that is success that is um not very attractive to most people because there is repetition involved um, there is a commitment. You must have a commitment to do something, um, even when it's hard, even when it's difficult, and even when you don't feel like it, you know. Uh, I will tell you, I never in a million years thought that I would be going back to school at this late date in my life. I can also tell you that it has been um, the most impactful and important decision, one of the most important and impactful decisions I've ever made uh, in my life. Um, again, from an early uh, early learner who's very distracted and disinterested in school um, to one who's now um, championing children and early childhood. Um, so I would love uh, to hear in the chat, do you have a practice of your own? Maybe it's about journaling, walking, self-care, collaboration, support, resiliency, commitment, and consistency. But um, if there are any practices that you engage in in your life normally and on a regular basis, if you could share that out. And I will ask um, Tisha and Stephanie to. Yes, we just opened the chat. So feel free participants to go ahead and log your answers right in there. Tanya, stretching to music, walking, journaling, meditating, talking with friends. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again. Stretching to music. Yes. Walking, journaling, meditating, and talking with friends. Mm -hmm. Practicing patience. There's a lot of walking and writing and music and commitment to friends. They're coming in now, Tanya. Hey, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to hear all of these things. So you, so you all are practicing all of this, this stuff already. This is great. This is really wonderful to hear. I'm so happy about that. We see some social aspects, commitment to friends, commitments to students, swimming, cooking, writing. Yeah. And um, then, uh, go ahead. A comment was made working on struggles that others have in common and mentoring them to share what has worked for me and my struggles. Yes. 
That's the next slide. We're going to get to that in just a second. Oh, I'm so excited. I wish I could see all your faces. Um, this is great. Um, so, so then that actually leads me to the next, um, if you've had an aha or eureka moment, um, whether it's in the classroom or whether it's on those walks, whether it's singing that song, whether it's moving that body, whether it's journaling or, 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 or any of the things that, that, that bring you joy. Have you had any eureka moments in the midst of it and or afterwards? Something that you were, were compelled or motivated to do. If you can put those in the chat, that would be great. And if you have it, that's okay, because the next exercise, uh, next slide is, is, is gonna start the exercise um, where we might be able to, to pull some of that stuff out of you. <laughs> Anything in there? Don't see anything yet, but feel free to go on and I'll jump in if I see it. Okay. So this is about words. I've always been about words. Even, even today when I'm talking to someone or when I'm trying to really understand something, even in words that we use every day, I often stop to like actually look up what the word actually really sincerely, truly means, right? Um, so um, the word innovation, that's the word that's just sort of bandied about a lot these days, innovation, innovation, everyone wants to innovate. What does that mean actually, right? So I literally looked it up in the dictionary. It is the action or process of innovating a new method, idea, or product, right? So, so I think that um, the word new is, 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 is an interesting good word in that new can even sometimes mean um, parsing together lots of old things in this new and unique way um, to make, a, the, the, and, and, and those parsing together of these old things in this very specific um, configuration can make a new thing. Um, uh, a, a new method, idea, or product. So that innovation does not have to look like, you know, a literacy proficiency software. Um, it, could, it could mean um, something as simple and as powerful as like what someone mentioned uh, in, in the last screen, um, a new way um, to teach that kid in the back who's a little bit quiet, um, uh, get them up more interested in reading or math or science or even just just to open up. You know, uh, innovation does not have to look um, um, you know like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos. Um, it, it can be it can be just as powerful, and I would even suggest you know as 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 early um, childhood educators. Um, I can't think of, of a more powerful um, position in the, in the, you know, other than parent caregivers, obviously, in the life of a child um, than the teacher. Um, you know, uh, I, I know that um, my teachers were, were very impactful um, to me in my life. I was a very sickly child. And so my teachers, um, I had one teacher, Miss Hinton, um, in the fifth grade. I'm trying to find her. I can't find her. She may not be I, I don't know where she is, um, but um, I had a teacher was Miss Hinton. I was a very sickly child, and Miss Hinton was doing something very unusual for children in the South Bronx. Um, and she was she was uh, uh, very much into health. So Miss Hinton got me on on a track um, to eating healthy and to exercise. And this is something that because I was such a sickly child and I was always sort of in the hospital that we did together as a class. And I would say that Miss Hinton really set my life on a wonderful path of, of, of being healthy. Um, she really, really kind of changed my life in, in that way. And um, I'm, I'm happy to say that I am, I am no longer a, uh, you know, a, a, a student, you know, I was a child who had a lot of um, asthmatic problems and pneumonia and and Miss Hinton did things with us in class. Um, she bought certain foods. Um, she she um, 
you know, incorporated um, food and learning, uh, food in, into the learning. Um, and um, she really set me, set me on a great path. Is there something in the Q&A there? I see something in the Q&A. Yes, I actually shared my favorite teacher did this too. And I did exactly what you're saying. I tried to cook with my students every single week. I think it's important. And I think if you're remembering it and I'm remembering it, that's good. Um, Barbara in the Q&A says, I love hearing about educators who are inspired by something other than a lecture teaching format. What would you like to see physically added in a traditional classroom setting to inspire children's learning? Can you, can you say that again? Yes, her question was, what would you like to see physically added in a traditional classroom setting to inspire children's learning? I, I would love to, and I'll actually speak as, as, as a seven-year-old. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen people who looked like me, right? And well, certainly when I was going to school, there, there, there was a lot less of that than there is now. Um, there's a lot of research that shows um, that supports the idea of this, this sort of um, this, uh, a protege, right, or or, or a mentor, um, or someone that looks like the child in question, or the community or demographic in question, is is a really strong and compelling motivator to help children learn, right? So if 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 a, a character or a person is going through um, the same things that a child is going through, that child is, is likely more apt to be um, attracted to, to, to the learning opportunity there um, without it being um, um, prescriptive. Um, it, it, will be, um, it will be a little bit more um, innate and, and, have, and they'll develop more of a sort of intrinsic, intrinsic uh, motivation to learn as opposed to uh, extrinsic. Thank you so much for that question, Barbara. It's a it's a really great question. Um, and 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 again, I think I'm, I'm answering it. You know, on the one hand, as an educator, but now on the other hand, as like a six or seven year old kid. Um, and so, seeing yourself is is really a, a wonderful way to, um, you know, seeing seeing myself or or even a person who looks like me or was part of part of my culture or does the same things that I do um, can be can be wonderfully uh, motivating and inspiring um, to a kid. And you, we have one more thing in the chat, and it yeah. says, um, "As teachers understanding who the introverts and extroverts are, while being mindful of them while we're doing lessons." Is there a question in that? I'm sorry. I no, I think that that must have just been something that you were adding to. But I, I love what you said about seeing people like you. I think that's a lot of, I think we're trying to do more and more of that. So I'm so glad that you said that to this group full of teachers, because yeah. we do need to make sure we add that into our classroom practices. Yeah. So um, so back to innovation and 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 what's on, on the slide. Thank you all for, for those. Um, for that, those comments and, and, and question. Um, so at, at the heart of innovation, I, I like to think of it in, in, you know, there's sort of um, four, four kind of branches to the tree. Um, so what I'll do right now is talk about how I came to Harriet. And then what I would love for you all to do in the next slide is if you have some a paper and some a pencil uh, to, to to then fill in those problem to solve gaps, strengths, and uh, weaknesses uh, for yourself. Um, I'm sorry, it's problem to solve. I can't see the, 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 rev the right side of my screen. It's problem to solve innovation, gaps, strengths, and what's on this side? What world needs. Right, what the world needs. That's very important. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go through through how I came to Harriet, and um, and then next slide you guys can can fill in your blanks. The innovation is an innovation called Harriet's House, a, a literacy a proficiency software uh, designed um, to increase literacy proficiency in children under eight. That's the innovation. The problem to solve: children reading. Very simple. Um, 
my strengths are uh, what I've been talking about, uh, you know, what I was talking about earlier in, in the session, um, storytelling, acting, writing, uh, performance, the arts is definitely, definitely a strong suit. Um, the gaps uh, was for me, education. Um, I thought that if I wanted to be helpful in, in, in helping children learn, um, I ought to spend some time um, developing my own self as an educator. So that's when I took myself back to school. And that is likely, you know, also a reason why many of you are here. This is, you know, essentially a professional development. Education is, is professional development. And then here's the, the, the big one. And it's weird that I, that I can't see this because I can't figure out how to move things on my screen while, while, this, while my PowerPoint is up. And that is what the world needs. And by the world, I, again, I, it, it doesn't have to be um, the Elon Musk and, and, and Jeff Bezos of it all. The world can be your world, right? So if there is another teacher um, having a um, problem or is, is, is getting hemmed up on, or, or just doesn't really know how to, how to solve something, um, you know, and, and if there are, there are enough of, of those happening in the world, that's an opportunity to say, you know what? It's not just me that's needing this, right? So, so the world can mean your sphere of, of influence, whether it's, it's the classroom, whether it's, it's your school, whether it's um, with, um, with other administrators, the superintendent. Um, so, so, so that's a very important part of the, the, the puzzle because I think innovation is, is not only about what it is we like to do that can certainly be part of it, but another really important part of it is like someone else has to need it too, right? And, and the more people, the better. The more problems you can be solving um, with as many people, um, um, the better. So, um, and, and, and so after you have, you know, this uh, idea or innovation, I, I call this uh, what, what it is, um, your, your unique offering. And then um, the idea of connecting with, uh, you know, whether it's organizations, associations, corporations, institutions, nonprofits, um, whether it's um, administrators, uh, fellow teachers, um, um, your principal, um, who needs this innovation? Who needs this new way of looking at the world, this new method, connecting with those people? You can you can connect with them traditionally, or you can connect with them, you know, which is the 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 the, the single most um, and the lowest hanging um, um, fruit that we all have at our disposal. Love it or hate it, and that is a little thing called social media that is uh, that is a part of of each of our lives. You know, I know that Tisha that uses uh, social media very well, um, and that comes in the form of you know uh, TikTok. <laughs> uh, comes in the form of podcasts. Um, that comes in the form. It comes in. It, it really can come in any form. Um, but but sharing um, your ideas and interventions or or innovations on social media is uh, is is a wonderful way to go. You'd be helping a lot of lot of people. Um, and so I actually want to go back to this. I'd like for us to spend hmm, about four or five minutes, um, and and you you all looking at those these five three, three yeah these five these five little kind of branches um, and and create something for you. Thank you for that. <laughs> create something for yourself um, in terms of innovation. What is your problem to solve? What are strengths or interests that you have? Where are the gaps, right? Where might you need some support or additional development or connecting with someone who just doesn't, who, who has, this, has the thing that you really need that, that, that you don't have that, that 
it would not be efficient enough for you to cultivate on, on your own, right? Um, and, and then again, um, thinking a little, a lot about what the world needs. So if we could spend a little bit of time on that, if, if people can um, just take a couple minutes to think about- Yes, and we have something in the chat. Someone said, my strengths are remembering people and names. Innovation is being open to change, different ideas. We need more understanding of differences across the board, gaps, our actions, and how to do it and move forward in action. Okay, great. Gaps, uh, action. Uh, okay. Um, and, and what's the problem to solve? Sue, what is your problem to solve? Do you have a problem? And the chat is open for everyone to share. So go right ahead and start typing in the chat box. Okay, I'm starting to get a lot of people's now. Okay, great. Hang on. Um, when covering a class with students with a disability and not know how to handle the outbursts that they may have, strengths I have is being very organized. My problem to solve is providing children with materials and tools to get a quality education. Sue's was how to move forward with differences. All of these are very important. Mm -hmm. So not knowing how to handle a student in different situations, um, providing quality materials for a quality education and how to move forward with differences in education. Yeah. So gosh, I wish that I could see you all because I would love to talk to you um, individually and get um, and ask you more questions because then that's gonna help to help to drill down. Um, First, I want to. I just want to address some of some of what I heard in the chat. Um, someone said uh, one of their gaps is that um, is is around taking action. I'd love for that person to tell tell me a little bit more about that. What 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 they mean by that is that the, you might have an idea, but then you don't do anything uh, about it, um, and 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 so. You just sort of have it, and 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 nothing and nothing happens. Is is that what you mean? Nothing in the chat yet. Okay. Um, someone said, I, I get overwhelmed ADHD on what to do next sometimes. Right. Okay. That's great. And so then, then that, that goes back to, to the previous slide, which, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the slide that had to do with mindset, but, but there's something on that list, um, that, that talked about, um, support. Um, and, 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 and I think that, you know, there is something about, you know, I also think teachers are sort of naturally creative people, right? Um, 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 and so I think that people who, who tend to be naturally creative um, can have a tendency, and, and I can certainly uh, relate to this, um, have a tendency to just have a lot of things going on uh, in the brain. And so, I will, I will share with you something that I have done. Uh, it's a very simple thing, but it's sort of like really changed my life. <laughs> and that is, I have this device um, that is called a Remarkable, and it is a digital paper that I use to um, jot down and organize all my ideas. And I like it because it's, it's digital paper it's it's not computer it's not linked to the internet it's not it's not any of those things it's literally like the simplest thing you can imagine it's digital paper and i got it because i have all these ideas and there are lots in different notebooks 
Um, but, but this device allows me to have all of my ideas um, just all in one space, one organized space. So when I say support, I would say that my remarkable is the device that has actually given me a lot of support with my um, inability um, to sort of concentrate on one thing for long periods of time um, or, or, or my propensity to sort of um, flit around uh, a bit. Um, and, and then, you know, I've also had to ask myself, um, and this is outside of ADHD, this is really goes, goes, goes to the original uh, person who reached out and, and talked about their, uh, their, their gaps, that, that sometimes that they have problems um, taking action on, on a gap. And, and, and I, would, I, would, I would question um, is, if, if there's fear under, under that. Um, fear of being rejected, fear of being, you know, failing or fear of even being successful. Um, you know, drilling down on, on, on why it is that, that, that you are having a problem taking action um, could be helpful in your taking action, <laughs> if that makes sense. I love that, Tanya. There's other people coming in and we only have 10 minutes left. I wanted to just, I know, I oh, wanted gosh. to give you the 10 minute warning because we will have another one starting in 10 minutes, yes. but there are tons in the, um, uh, in the chat. I don't know if you want to keep going with your presentation or if you would like some more chat. Well, I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this on the screen because this is really the crux of the program today, right? Okay. This is this is uh, you know it, it, it's really about you coming up with uh, with with your own problem to solve, um, uh, bearing in mind your strengths, the gaps, what the world needs, and 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 getting to the crux of of whatever your innovation is. I would love to instead, um, you know, uh, I would love to instead really focus on um, the questions that are coming in in uh, uh, in the chat. Okay, perfect. Then we will just go ahead and start our question and answer for the last 10 minutes of the session. Um, I had someone say, when covering a class with ADHD and ADD, teachers do not disclose this information to new teachers in fear of talking about the students to someone who they know they don't, oh, who they think don't need to know. But I think it's important for someone being in the classroom who is taking care of the students when the teacher is away. Um, someone said, digital paper. I'm going to research that. Thank you so much. Um, and hey, if you want to go ahead and, and make this small, you can escape out of this and you can actually see the chat. Oh, I could stop sharing? Uh -huh. You can stop sharing if you want, or you can just um, hit escape and you'll be able to see the chat. Oh. Um, you'll either be able to see the chat at the book. There you go. Perfect. And then you, I don't have to speak. You can take okay. over. Perfect. This is so wonderful. Okay. Um, I want I want to sort of address the uh, the um, uh, ch a child with disabilities um, because I think that that's uh, important. Um, and and I'm actually gonna to to go to the um, to the group to 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 the to the culture to the classroom to to to. And, and see if there are, there is anyone in here who has had a similar issue and um, when covering a, 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 a what's that? Yeah. where is that question? Um, it's the very last um, comment. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording since we're just going to do questions now. Okay. Thank you.